All right, this is fourth grade, module three, lesson 37. And in this lesson, students are going to be trying to transition from that area model where they, the students are coming up with four partial products. And we're trying to transition to that standard algorithm, which really is just two partial products. It's more of the standard algorithm. This lesson is a little clunky. Um, it's a little odd how students are supposed to be showing their work. It is absolutely not the standard algorithm, even though uh, the objective says it is. Um, uh, but that's okay. Get through this lesson. It'll be fine. And if you want, if students still prefer the area model, go ahead and use the area model. But let's get going on this. So we have two instances of the same problem. Right here, we have the partial products where there's four partial, the area model where there's four partial products, and this is what it would look like vertically. And then over here, we have the same problem, 26 times 34, only now it's list, it's shown as two partial products and over here. And this is where it starts to look a lot like the, um, the standard algorithm. So let's get going on this. So starting over here with the four partial products, we see that this is 180. We see that this area is 24 square units. We see that this is 600 square units. And that's 80 square units. So what are we supposed to do? The idea is 6 times 24 goes, I mean 6 times 4 goes right here. And we see that 6 times 3 tens goes right here. So it's 180. And then we see 20 times 4 ones, so 2 tens times four ones is 80, and it goes right there. And then two tens times three tens equals 600, and it goes right there. And then we add, and we add those partial products right here, so going in vertically. Now, teachers, it's really important that our students line up these digits. So parents and teachers, what you may want to do is you may want to do this on grid paper that allows students to put one digit per box and it kind of helps them stay organized. But we're going to add, we get four ones, we get 18 tens, so that's an eight and we're going to carry into the hundreds column and then we have eight hundreds, so the answer is 884. Now over here in the two partial product box here, first we're going to do is 6 times 34. So that's 6 ones times 34 ones right here. What's, what's, uh, what gets a little clunky on this lesson is, I don't know, how, there's not too many students who could do this in their head. So students are going to have to kind of go down here on scratch paper, do 34 times 6, and get 204 in this case. And so they would write 204 right here. So this partial product is 204. And then they see that, okay, well now this area right here is 20 times 34. So that's two tens times 34 ones. So we're going to do 34 times 2. That ends up being 68, but it's actually 68 tens. So it becomes 60, uh, 680. So that box right here is 680, and then we can put that right here, 680, and adding our two partial products, we end up with the exact same answer of 884. So parents and teachers, if at this point in fourth grade, if our students prefer the four partial products method, by all means, let them continue doing that, even as you continue each day nudging the students towards um, the more standard algorithm. So here it says to solve using the two partial products method. Parents and teachers, at this point, if you want your students to uh, instead use the four partial products method, by all means, let them do it. Uh, in fact, that I'm going to start off by doing that. So here's my decomposition. It becomes 52, 50 and 2 and 20 and 6. And, and then over here, I'm going to write 
the vertical method, 26 times 52. And what we're going to do is I'm going to try and fill this in in order for that partial product. So if we were to do this, it would be 2 ones times 6 ones, so that's 12 ones. And 2 ones, whoa, 2 ones times 2 tens equals 4 tens, so that's 40. So adding that together, we get 52. So that's going to go right here. Now it's a coincidence that this is a 52, because really what we did was 2 times 26. And if we wanted to, we could write this down, 2 times 26. Going down here for this next row, we've got 50 times 6. So that's 5 tens times 6. So that's 30 tens, which is 300. And then here, we've got 5 tens times 2 tens. So that's 10 hundreds, which is 1,000. So we have, a th I want to do that in blue. A thousand. Now, if we were to add this row together, we would get 1,300. And what is that? Well, that is by doing 50 times 26. All right. So this first number is by doing 2 times 26. And then this second number is by doing 50 times 26. And really, we're not going to think of this as a 50. We're going to think of this as 5 tens. All right, and then we add, and we get 2, 5, 3, 1. So this answer is 1,352. And if we were to add all of these partial products, let's do that. So we would have 12 and 40 and 300 and 1,000. If we were to add up our partial products, sure enough, no big surprise, we get the exact same answer. So parents, parents and teachers, I know the directions say two partial products, and that's this over here. But if your students just aren't tracking with that quite yet, it's okay to stick with the uh, area model using the four partial product. And here we're going to continue kind of squeezing our students towards or nudging our students towards that two partial products method. So let's do this first problem right here. So our first partial product is going, going to be 3 times 68. That's 3 times 68. All right. So 3 times 68, students may need to go down here on scratch paper, 68 times 3, and get 204. All right. So I'm going to write 204 as our first partial product. And then as our second partial product, we've got this 2, but that's not really a 2. It's 2 tens times 68. So that's going to be 68 times 2. You get 136, but that's 136 tens. So that really becomes 1,360. So that becomes 1,360. And then I'm officially ready to add my two partial products. So 4 and 0 gives me 4, 0 and 6 gives me 6, 2 and 3 gives me 5, and just the 1. So our answer is 1,564, and if we wanted to use that 4 partial product method to verify it, we really could. So in fact, let's do it. 68 times 23, that's easy enough. So let's do that. So 68 times 23... So let's do our box, our area model, and we have 68, 23, and we can, let's see, this is 160, this is 24, this is 1,200, and this is 180. And so now, if we wanted to, this is kind of a nice little shortcut, we can add this row together. And what are we going to get? We're going to get, and in fact, I'm going to write this down, 23 times 68. Now, as we add this row together, we get 180, uh, 184. And I think fourth graders can add that in their head. So this one, 
might be a little trickier, but we're going to add these two numbers. So you get 1,200 plus 180, and the 200 and the 100 are in the same column. So we end up with 1,380. And now when we add those together, 4 and 0 is 4, 8 and 8 is 16, carry the 1. And then we've got 1 plus 1 plus 3 is 5, and then 1. And so the answer is 1,564, and that's exactly what we knew the answer was supposed to be using the two partial products. So you have a choice. You can try and do right here what they were aiming for, or you can go down here and just do the partial products using four partial products. At this point, it's okay for our fourth graders to choose either method. And that wraps up fourth grade, module three, lesson 37. We're trying to transition from the four partial product area model to that standard algorithm.